Hey there, welcome back to Reddit XO, the best channel for Reddit cheating stories. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification for more stories like these. Now, let's get into the video. Rant, I'm a husk of a human being since I found out about the infidelity. A year ago, I discovered that my girlfriend of five years, whom I believed would be my wife and whom I adored, had been cheating on me. I acquired the evidence entirely by chance. That day, the chaos and unpredictability of the cosmos worked in my favor, if only for a little period. But once I saw it, it was unmistakable what had been going on. For months, she had been cheating on me with different guys. And this is exactly what I had unequivocal confirmation of. There was undoubtedly more more than I will ever know. That was a day I'll never forget. I'll never forget how I felt. As I received message after message, the blood in my body became ice cold, each one confirming that my whole world was going to come tumbling down around me. In my mind, my whole view on my relationship started to twist. What I had previously thought did not match what I was now witnessing. It seemed as though reality itself was collapsing. That day, a part of me perished and will never return. I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or a terrible thing. I suppose only time will tell. After a few hours, I gathered my courage and resolved to face her. Before I played my hand, I offered her one final unprompted opportunity to confess the truth. I was anxious not to have to do that. Even after reading and seeing everything, things that shattered my whole self-esteem in a matter of minutes, I still wanted to think she would at the very least come clean about it all without me presenting her evidence. I now realize that I was utterly insane at the time. How could I expect someone as deceitful, greedy, cowardly, and dishonest as her to tell me the truth? she previously shown that she was who she claimed to be. She was the first person to whom I ever really opened myself, both physically and emotionally. I was absolutely innocent and had a blind optimism and trusting attitude that she effectively abused and has since vanished. I sat her down gently but firmly and asked her if she had anything she needed to tell me. She declined. I inquired if she had ever cheated on me throughout our relationship. She declined. I asked if there was anything she had lied to me about, and if so, to please come clean about it. She said that there was nothing. She pretended to be perplexed that I would even pose these questions, as if there were no legitimate reason for me to question them at all. As she answered each question, I could feel the color drain from my face. I could really feel myself becoming pale. With each response, I realized the person in front of me was someone I had never met before. Finally, the excessively idealized image of her in my imagination was detached from her genuine person. I simply sat there in quiet for a few moments, trying to figure out what was going on and how it was going to continue. I asked her one more pointless inquiry, is there anything more you want to tell me? Anything. Are you certain there isn't anything? No. What is the source of this? Is there a problem? She responded. I was crushed and in a state of shock. She made me play my hand, so I just took a big breath and started reading her letters to each of her guide toys aloud. Even when I read them aloud and glanced over to her for her reaction, she seemed perplexed as to why I was reading them at all and pretended as if nothing was wrong. As if these communications didn't imply anything unusual at all. It was just a routine discussion amongst friends, which was weird to me since I don't recall having any buddies with whom I discussed meeting up for, snuggling, or kissing. Call me crazy, but I don't send nude images of myself to my friends and they don't send me naked pictures of themselves. The more she pretended to be stupid as I read them, the more enraged I became. My head felt like it was ready to burst. On the exterior, I kept my cool, but on the inside, I was on the edge of going insane. I didn't fall for her deception methods. No, not this time. I knew I had all of the cards. I went through each message explaining to her, like you would to a kid, what each message meant, why it was bad, and why it suggested she was cheating on me after reading them all out maybe three times without her even admitting she had done anything wrong. She was a wise young lady who didn't need me to explain why sending a message indicating plainly that she was going to meet up with someone for was considered cheating. Even still, she would debate with me about each message, striving to downplay its ramifications to the greatest extent possible. She lied, denied, and reduced everything she could. Finally, as I constantly put out my case with each communication, like a lawyer would in court, she realized I wasn't falling for her deceptive techniques. She sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. She was doomed. She said that she felt terrible and guilty about it. She was in such a bad mood. What a helpless victim of this terrible world she was. She said she merely did it to increase her self-esteem. 
It's not what it seems to be, she said. She had been thinking about informing me for days, but didn't want to harm me, so she chose to carry the load as punishment and never tell me. But she also told me she was going to inform me in a few days. Neither example made sense, considering that this was not something that happened in the distant past. It was continually happening, and she denied everything until I physically forced her to admit. Even yet, she reduced as much as she could while admitting. She'd been texting one of her guy toys only two days before. While we were both sleeping in the same bed, she said she was only doing it because she suspected I was cheating on her and that she would stop when I did. I asked her what made her believe I was cheating on her and if she had any evidence. Crickets. I was not, have never been, and will never be a cheater. She flung every explanation. She could think of in the hopes that one would stick and I'd believe it. She blurted out so many words in her crocodile tears that half of them contradicted one other. I had the impression that I was seeing the unraveling of a whole individual in front of me. A ball of falsehoods packed tightly together, ultimately unraveled by a slack thread. It seemed like I wasn't even looking at a human person anymore, but at some nasty beast trying but failing to resemble one. I really considered if she had a personality issue or was a psychopath slash sociopath to some extent. It was very strange and distressing to see her unraveling. Throughout our relationship, she did a slew of other heinous things to me. I was young, inexperienced, and caring. Someone like that would be the ideal target for someone like that. I treated her like gold as she emotionally tormented me and love-bombed me until I forgave her. Then, do something much worse. Then she will love-bomb me until I forgive her. Then, do something much worse. And the cycle would continue until she finally abused me horribly without remorse, ending in her ultimate betrayal. The only reason she tried to demonstrate, read, fake, regret was because I'd had enough of her and her unethical actions. I called it quits. To make matters worse, she informed her family, whom I loved as if they were my own, and for whom I did so much that it would be too long to list in this essay, that I was the one who cheated on her. She had a younger cousin who lived with her family and with whom she was close. I treated her as if she were my own flesh and blood, and I sincerely loved her as if she were my little sister. She is just a kid, so I certainly don't hold anything against her, but when my ex and I split up, she messaged me and sent me really terrible things because she claimed that I was the one who cheated on her. It devastated my already wounded heart. This tiny ball of innocence, whom I loved and cared for, turned against me in the most heinous manner conceivable due to a total misunderstanding of the facts and I was well aware that she had probably turned the rest of her family against me as well. I wanted to respond back and defend myself, saying that it was her who cheated but I was so exhausted that I just banned my ex and her whole family on everything and went no contact. I realized it was pointless to attempt to argue with her family members about what had transpired, and I wasn't going to show a kid the filthy things my ex wrote to her AP in order to clear my name in her eyes. I haven't felt human since that day. I'm just in my late twenties yet I feel like I've been alive for a thousand years. Every day is a recitation of the same routine. I go about like a zombie, taking care of the tasks that I must like job, but on the inside I am in full pain. I can't recall the last time I awoke with anything other than unpleasant feelings. My self-esteem is close to none. On most days I actually despise myself. I'm no longer interested in anything. My previous goals and ambitions have all but evaporated. I'm scarcely able to drag myself out of bed. I'm filled with rage like I've never felt before. Always bubbling under the surface. My existence is being boiled away. I'm in the worst depression I've ever experienced. I'm plagued with vengeful ideas that I hesitate to act on. I'm having disturbing ideas of committing violent things to myself. I have no desire to do anything violent to myself. I'm not suicidal or anything like that. But these movies of me doing something like that play in my brain. I'm not sure how to put that into words. I just have a mental image of myself doing something like that, and I have no desire to really do it. I merely watch it happen, if that makes sense. Almost everything is a direct effect of my connection with my ex. I'm not here to give you advice. Despite her several efforts to win me back and demonstrate how much she really loves me, I have no communication with my ex. I go to the gym and keep myself in good condition. I have many wonderful friends with whom I spend my time, as well as a wonderful family of my own. I don't want to burden them with my suffering. I do my best to put on a brave front while suffering alone. I have a lot of interests, as well as a terrific job. 
but when the hustle ceases, ideas fill my mind like a tsunami. The negativity hangs on me like an anvil around my neck. Edit. To clarify for some, my ex and her family have no contact with anybody in my life. So she isn't going around telling everyone I know that I'm the terrible person. She simply informed her family. Obviously, it still stinks after all I've done for them and the love I and her family had, but it has no bearing on my present life slash relationships. Everyone who knows me is aware of what occurred. I'm not even sure why I wrote this post. I think I'm simply venting slash ranting. It might be tough to keep everything to myself at times. Reading this may help someone who has cheated or is considering cheating appreciate the significance of their acts. If they ever thought such a selfish, cowardly, and despicable thing in the first place. Perhaps one of you has had a similar situation, and we might feel better together as a result of our shared experiences. It's comforting to know that we're not alone in our suffering. That is a natural element of being human. Thank you for taking the time to read this. I apologize for the length, and I don't want to dampen anyone's spirits. I wish you joy and happiness in your life. Be considerate. Be considerate. Be truthful. Be a person of character. Send forth love, laughter, and smiles not sorrow, suffering, or pain. Treat people in the same way that you would want to be treated. Something we are all taught from an early age, yet many do not seem to understand.